Bonjour encore une fois. Voici donc notre deuxième cours sur les notions fondamentales de la géologie structurelle. On va parler des contraintes. Le premier cours c'était sur les déformations et aujourd'hui on parle des contraintes. Pour rappel, voici donc les deux notions fondamentales pour la géologie structurelle, les contraintes et la déformation. Uh, so as I'm saying, this is our second course on the fundamental basis for geological structure. Structure geology, talking about strays and stray. So last time we talked, uh, we talked about stray, la deformation, and today we're talking about stress or contrast. So this is uh, me again, this is Raha, as uh, you have heard in the welcome message. The objectives today are to see uh, and recognize different types of constraint and you will be able to define it. And the other objective is to be able to explain the ellipsoid of stress and the tensors of stress. Um, lastly, we will be able to define the relationship between stress and strain. Donc, uh, ceux qui comprennent plus le français, vous pouvez lire exactement ce que je viens d'expliquer en anglais. Le plan, on va d'abord définir les contraintes, to define the stress, the contraintes, the decomposition of Strays on the plan, we will see pre, pre actual stress defined by an ellipsoid of tensors and ellipsoid of stress and tensors of stress. An ellipsoid of stress will be seen more uh, focusedly, and we can decompose the ellipsoid of uh, stress. Lastly, we will see that it's very important the relationship between stress and strain. La relation géométrique, geometrical relationship. There is a relationship, we will see what it is. Lastly, we will see the conclusion and prepare ourselves for the rest of the course, which will be very very interesting. The definition of stress is uh, a strain in force, a strength which is applied on a surface. This is a simple, very simple definition. And as you know, stress, or a strength, or I mean, a force, when is applied on surface, can be decomposed. In a normal a normal component, it has a normal component and a, ten, a tangential component. This is uh, as in all the science. This is how we uh, uh, decompose a force. And this is the first case on the left is when you have only one stress exercise on the surface, and the second one is when you have two different axes. This is why I call it B axial, this one uniaxial. Um, just to help us understand better, I'm taking back this image that we had on the first lesson. Uh, you see that there is a rock called the intact rock in a lab. We are, as indicated here, we are in a lab experiment. The deformation of the stress, uh, that the strain that we saw last time, is what you observe on the ground. You can observe a shear rupture. We can observe a crack, uh, what we call tension cracks. You can observe all these things, but why are these uh, happening 
This is because of a stress which is organized around the rock. So this is experimental activities done in a lab that which reflect what happened in nature. Today we can see deformation, but this deformation, deformation when it's studied, it can give you an indication of which kind of stress was exercised on the rock and even go farther by understanding the different steps, the different uh, stages of deformation uh, by different stages of stress. Um, this is another image I'm dropping from one of the lessons to come, just to give you an indication of how in nature you can finally find your tensors or your the directions of your stress uh, in a valley. So this is a house, this is a lake. See that one of them is always parallel to the surface. Uh, one of them is always parallel, but this we will see uh, in more details in future. As we say, let's define uh, or see what an ellipsoid or a tensor can be uh, about, but before that, we are seeing this image to show you that there is uh, a normal composition component and a tangential component as we see. So the two are not exercising the same, uh, the same strength or the same direction or their uh, impact is not the same in one point. Let's say in point zero here, you have the maximum, the normal, um, component is at its maximum but the tangential one is at the middle while when you are almost a hundred you're gonna have the minimum of the normal and the middle at uh, tangential okay um so this is the ellipsoid it says uh uh, uh, has it has three main components which this is how we do this is how we draw it uh, schematically to just show you um, to try help ourselves to understand what is the stress which is exercised in one particular point what is the stress so we define um, a sigma one a sigma two and a sigma three the sigma one should be the high the highest stress the most impact or the most stress which is exercised in one point the sigma two is the the middle one and the sigma three has to be the minimum one so just to have a comparison with and reminding you the ellipsoid of uh, deformation of, of strain and to compare uh, how we define or how we draw it uh, the three axes here for an ellipsoid of stress are sigmas they are presented as sigmas here x x y and z x x being the highest uh, the, the, the axis of the highest deformation, y being the medium, x being the minimum. Now, once may say ah, so this is normal. When you have your sigma one, is where you have your maximum. Okay, this is an ellipsoid of deformation. Is what is drawn here. So we may believe that the ellipsoid of uh, deformation may coincide with an ellipsoid of uh, 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 stress, but it's not always the case because in nature you never have a perfect, let's say, co actual. You're gonna see it in the notes. 
uh, a perfect coaxial uh, deformation. It can happen that the two are coincidental, but this may only happen in one time of the history of the rock. But at the end, when you observe a rock and you can draw a elixir of deformation, I'm reminding you that this will be your Z, this will be your X, this will be your Y. Sometimes you find there are sigmas are uh, deviating, like you have, as we say, our deformation is generally rotational. So it will a bit deviate and creating all the structures that uh, we can see on the ground and which we will see uh, very soon as we are progressing in the course. So thank you very much. This was quite a um, very simple uh, principle. We saw last time uh, deformation, strain. Today we are seeing constraint. Uh, we saw today the definition. We decompose it. Uh, we see the compounded normal component and uh, tangential component. We say that uh, there is um, an ellipsoid that can represent, help us when we study, represent the stress that have happened in an area. But as we saw in the, in the first lesson, knowing that it's more easier to represent the deformation uh, um, the deformation uh, ellipsoid because this is what you are, uh, can actually see and study on the ground. But the ellipsoid of stress generally is calculated. So we also saw the adjusting the relationship between geometric and um, uh, a, uh, the geometric relationship between a strain and a stress. Uh, so next parts of this course will be we're gonna see uh, the two kind of deformation that you can see in an uh, in nature, uh, ductile, brittle, and um, uh, ductile and brittle uh, deformation. To be very very interesting and. Uh, at the end, we will also have time to look at this very wonderful uh, software wind tensor, which helps you analyze after you've gathered all the observation on the ground, all the geologists and the technicians have gathered all the structural geolo geological information. Then you can put it in those software and uh, have a very good analysis and processing of data which enables you to study an area and have all the understanding and models of uh, formation and deformation. Thank you very much. This is the end. It was a very great joy again to um, give you guys this video or to help you understand the lesson that I've also posted. So thank you for your comments in the forums. Thank you for all you guys. Uh, uh, I, I'm bringing in the calls also. I will, I will be available and happy to have each one of you to understand better this course. Thank you very much. This is Jisra Faraha. Uh, you, you will find in the website my email address and everything you need to give me your feedback and any question, feel free to share. Thank you.